Good Friday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversation Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, we made it to the end of another week. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Friday. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Saganovich, and in today's Entertainment Spotlight, you've been part of my conversation with Dr. Mark M. Murray discussing the importance of stroke awareness. Enjoy today's program. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Friday headlines in national news. House votes to hold Trump ally Steve Bannon in contempt. The House voted Thursday to hold Steve Bannon, a longtime ally and aide to former President Donald Trump, in contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena from the committee investigating the violent January 6th Capitol insurrection. In a rare show of bipartisanship on the House floor, the committee's Democratic chairman, Mississippi Representative Benny Thompson, led the floor debate along with Republican Representative Liz Cheney of Wyoming one of two Republicans on the panel. Still, the vote was 229 to 202, with all but nine GOP lawmakers who voted saying no. The House vote sends the matter to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Washington, where it will now be up to prosecutors in that office to decide whether to present the case to a grand jury for possible criminal charges. It's still uncertain whether they will pursue the case. Attorney General Merrick Garland would only say at a House hearing on Thursday that they plan to make a decision consistent with the principles of prosecution. The partisan split over Bannon's subpoena and over the committee's investigation in general is emblematic of the raw tensions that still grip Congress nine months after the Capitol attack. Democrats have vowed to comprehensively probe the assault in which hundreds of Trump supporters battered their way past police, injured dozens of officers, and interrupted the electoral count certifying President Joe Biden's victory. Lawmakers on the investigating committee say they will move swiftly and forcefully to punish anyone who won't cooperate with the probe. We will not allow anyone to derail our work because our work is too important, Thompson said ahead of the vote. MR National News, White House and Dems hurriedly reworking $2 trillion Biden plan. The White House and Democrats are hurriedly reworking key aspects of President Joe Biden's $2 trillion domestic policy plan, trimming the social services and climate change programs and rethinking new taxes on corporations and the wealthy to pay for a scale-back package. The changes come as Biden more forcefully appeals to the American people, including a televised town hall Thursday evening, for what he says are the middle-class values at the heart of his proposal. As long-sought programs are adjusted or eliminated, Democratic leaders are showing great deference to Biden's prefaces to swiftly wrap up talks and reach a deal in the narrowly held Congress. Even a new White House idea abandoning plans for reversing the Trump-era tax rates in favor of an approach that would involve taxing the investment incomes of billionaires to help finance the deal appears acceptable to top Democrats. The leadership is racing to finish negotiations, possibly by today. We have a goal. We have a timetable. We have milestones. And we've met them all. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who predicted on Thursday it will pass soon. Talks between the White House and Democratic leaders were focused on reducing what had been a $3.5 trillion package to about $2 trillion in what would be an unprecedented federal effort to expand social services for millions and address the rising threat of climate change. With stark Republican opposition and no Democratic votes to spare, Biden must keep all lawmakers in his party, centrists and progressives, aligned. An abrupt change of course came late Wednesday when the White House floated new ways to pay for parts of the proposal by shelving a long plan increase in corporate and top income tax rates, but adding others, including a tax on the investment gains of the very richest Americans. MR National News, CDC panel backs expanded booster rollout of COVID-19 vaccine. Millions more Americans are closer to getting a COVID-19 booster as influential government advisors on Thursday endorsed extra doses of all three of the nation's vaccines and open the possibility of choosing a different company's brand for that next shot. Certain people who received Pfizer vaccinations months ago already are eligible for a booster, and now advisors to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say Moderna and Johnson & Johnson recipients should qualify too. And in a bigger change, the panel allowed the flexibility of mixing and matching that extra dose regardless of which type people receive first. MR National News FBI says remains found in Florida Park ID'd as Brian Laundry. The FBI on Thursday identified human remains found in a Florida nature preserve 
as those of Brian Laundrie, a person of interest in the death of girlfriend Gabby Petito while the couple was on a cross-country road trip. And finally in business news, U.S. unemployment claims fall to new pandemic low of 290,000. The number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits fell last week to a new low point since the pandemic erupted, evidence that layoffs are declining as companies hold on to workers. Unemployment claims dropped 6,000 to 290,000 last week, the third straight drop, the Labor Department said Thursday. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's on time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Tagamis. Mary Ellen, take it away. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Keep hope alive. Optimism is a strong force that contributes to your positive expectations about your future plans. Optimistic feelings are your fuel, aiding you to create positive energy. This powerful energy attracts more opportunities for success. You can assist this process by consciously focusing on optimistic outcomes for any project you are working on. When a negative thought creeps into your mind, visualize pushing it out with a positive one. When you get in the habit of replacing negative thoughts with positive ones, your optimistic outlook becomes stronger. With determination and a strong, optimistic outlook, you gain focus and add strength to your intentions. Today, keep a positive and optimistic outlook, regardless of any challenges you might face. As you go about to, enjoy the day. We are part of my conversation coming up with Dr. Mark M. Murray in today's Entertainment Spotlight. Stay with us as you're listening to Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Dr. Mark M. Murray joined me recently on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about the importance of stroke awareness and exactly what a stroke is. Here's a bit of our conversation. The stats show that every 40 seconds someone in the U.S. has a stroke, so I guess an obvious question would be, what exactly is a stroke? Yeah, Cyrus, that's right. You know, there are about 800,000 strokes in the United States every year, and uh, and a stroke, is we also call it a brain attack. And it, it basically happens when you don't get enough blood flow to an area of the brain. Uh, that can happen for one of two reasons. Uh, the most common reason, the one most people think about is, is or see, or, is the one where you have like a, a decreased blood flow to an area of the brain because there's a blockage there or a narrowing in the blood vessel. Uh, we call those ischemic strokes, um, and and those again lead to not enough blood flow to the area downstream. Uh, and the second one, which is not as common, although we do see it quite a bit, is a, is a bleeding type stroke. We call it a hemorrhagic stroke, and that's when a blood vessel ruptures either because of an aneurysm or or a sign of weakness. Um, and, and we see those in about 15% of the cases. Um, but either way, it leads to the same thing, where you don't get enough blood flow to the area downstream, and so brain cells die. You know? So that's a stroke. Right. So why is it that black men and women seem to be at higher risk than for strokes? Yeah, you know, this one really uh, hits me near and dear to my heart because it affects me and, and, and you know, my community, my family, my friends a lot. And, and really there's no magic reason. The real reason probably is that, or most likely is that, there's not as much quality health care in the black community. You know, either they don't seek it out or there's not as much availability. And because of that, because they don't see primary care providers, because we don't go ahead to our annual checkups or we don't get those annual checkups, we're more likely to have at least one of the risk factors for stroke, you know, chronic conditions um, like high blood pressure. Uh, and then when we do have those chronic conditions, it's usually poorly treated or, or not treated at all, so poorly controlled. And so that leads to us having strokes at an earlier age and having a worse outcome when we do have strokes. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. We're about to guest on Monday with more news, Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Zaganovich, and of course your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.